Next up this afternoon, we're going to hear from Eric Delzer, the Regulatory Affairs Manager for the North Dakota Petroleum Council, as he presents a regulatory review. Following Eric will be Dustin Anderson, the Regulatory Manager with Cord Energy, who will give an operator's perspective. First, let me let, help me welcome Eric. Thank you, Brady. Very happy to be here today. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the federal regulations that we've been facing. You know, uh, Chairman Slauson uh, pointed out this morning, he, he said the regulatory onslaught, and that couldn't be more true. Uh, this administration has made it very clear since day one how they feel about the fossil fuel industry. In fact, they campaigned on the promise that they're going to kill fossil fuels. And they've been trying their hardest uh, to achieve that goal. They've been taking an all of government approach in that effort. Since we have partisan gridlock in Congress, and they're not getting many things accomplished there, uh, they've been using federal agencies to implement their agenda. And they've been doing it quite effectively. It's a page out of the Obama playbook. Uh, hit the ground running from day one, and uh, there, there's been over 250 documented ways that the administration uh, has made it significantly harder to produce oil and gas. If you look at the costs of all these rules, with every federal rulemaking, the agency has to do a cost analysis. That's published in the final rule. And if you add up the cost of all the rules, so since day one, uh, when this administration came in, they've issued over a thousand final rules at a cost to the American public of nearly two trillion dollars and over 300 million paperwork hours. Uh, if you contrast that with uh, the previous administration, uh, President Trump had many rules he also put out, but a lot of them uh, were to make improvements, to roll back red tape, to make it easier for companies to do business, and it actually was a net savings to the American public of nearly $100 billion. So if you graph it out, over time, this is what it looks like. And you'll see at the three-year mark, that's, that's this year. There's been a significant amount of rules put out this year since January 1. So we have been incredibly busy with the regulatory committee trying to stay on top of all of these as they come out and determine the impacts and, and how to comply and implement them. All right, now it's working. Uh, Brent coined the term death by a thousand cuts. Uh, very, very true. There's certainly been a lot of them. Uh, these are some of the rules that we've been facing, uh, some of the main ones impacting oil and gas. And as you can see, a lot of them have already entered litigation, and we're going to see these continue to be litigated out over the next couple of years. We have had a few wins. Uh, the waste prevention rule just last week, uh, District Judge Trainer placed an injunction on that rule, staying it from going into effect in uh, North Dakota, Texas, Wyoming, and in several other states. Uh, that one, the, the judge ruled in his decision that it was likely to win on its merits, that the case, uh, that the rule is arbitrary and capricious. Uh, but that's just one of many rules. But luckily, our state leaders have been very proactive in getting in front of these with litigation. Uh, the Industrial Commission, you know, the Governor, the Agriculture Commissioner, uh, the Attorney General, they've been weighing in heavily on these. There's a pretty large pot of money available at the state level to, to fight all these lawsuits. 
And there's a significant number of them. And it's not just the oil and gas industry, it's the coal industry, um, the auto industry. It's all across the board. And it's going to cost millions of dollars to fight all these lawsuits. But if we don't fight them all, uh, it could cost us billions in the long run. So it's incredibly significant uh, that, that we have that level of leadership that they're willing to, to go out there and challenge these. Talking about the rules themselves and why it's important that we challenge these, well, there, there's a lot of problems with these rules. Uh, many of them uh, set unattainable standards for the industry to reach. They infringe on state sovereignty. They increase costs um, that go all the way through the value chain down to the end user. If you're wondering why gas is so high, groceries are so high, everything else, it's not just inflation. It's the regulatory pressures as well being felt. Uh, one of the big things that really concerns us is the way they disproportionately impact small producers. And beyond that, they threaten the, the nation's energy security and uh, the economic development. Uh, it's really disincentivizing future development. Uh, and the biggest thing with it is there's no real discernible benefit for many of these rules. Now the, you know, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Endangered Species Act, those are all success stories for the American public. Uh, we've come a long way since the, the 1970s in cleaning up our water and cleaning up our air, but we get to a point of diminishing returns. And that's where we're at right now. These rules are very restrictive to the industry and it's gonna make it very challenging to you know, keep moving forward if we don't get some of these rolled back. And now I would like to welcome and introduce the chairman of the regulatory committee for the NDPC, Dustin Anderson. He's going to come up and he's going to give, give a bit of perspective from the operator side of things on the impacts, how they're navigating it, trying to implement these new rules. Uh, Dustin is the regulatory manager for Cord Energy. He has 17 years of environmental and regulatory experience working in the energy and mining industries. Come on ahead, Dustin. All right. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> uh, first, I'd like to start off by recognizing the work that the uh, uh, regulatory committee has done, and many of you in the audience have. <clears throat> As these rules have been rolled out, we've, we've uh, commented and, and worked with the different governing agencies to to look at some sort of compromise. And, and then we've, at this stage of the game, outside of litigation, it's now it's looking at how do we, how do we respond to these as far as implementing and, and become compliant. So I thought maybe I'd take a second to just kind of walk through um, what happens when, when these rules do come down and then how, how they, they kind of roll out to the field so we can demonstrate compliance. And the other part of it is, is, is um, there's a lot of cost associated with it because um, some of these these rules um, change your process, the daily processes. Example would be the waste prevention rule, the way we, we account for flared gas on, on tribal and Indian land, or um, federal and tribal lands. And so th there's a, a significant disruption to, to the group as you, as you decipher the rule and you work with the field to try to um, get them up to speed and, and help them um, change their processes or implement new processes um, to, to achieve this compliance. So, so there's that part of it um, that, and then there's of course, um, the other part is, is the way that the rules are rolled out and, and the haste in which they came. Um, it was, the, the agencies themselves are challenged by, by understanding how they're gonna roll these rules out. And in the case of, of some of the, the federal rules with, with the BLM, you know, they came um, so fast and they, the field were being trained you know, multiple weeks after the rule was to be uh, enforced. And so that, that has um, been a big challenge for them. And, and some of the, the wins, I think, 
as we look at you know, the, the recent rules is the opportunity for the governing agency and the operators to come together and, and kind of work together. And I think um, because of some of the work that the Patron Council has done and kind of bridging that gap, I think we've seen some, some clear successes there. And in some cases, I think it's actually made us a, a, a little um, more united because I think <laughs> in this case, there's probably a little more common common ground here. Um, another challenge though, while we, we are uh, celebrating a win with, with the waste prevention rule, there are some other parts of that that, are, that create some challenges, right? So the operator is kind of in this, this time where is the rule gonna get rolled back or is the rule gonna go forward? But the, the effective date has already begun, right? And so you have to um, kind of make a decision there or do we go ahead and, and, and do business as though the rule is in place, and, or do we, you know, we stop, sit back, and wait? So I think a lot of the operators are, are, are struggling with that uh, going on right now. Um, the other one that I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out a specific um, challenge that we have right now, and that's is in the Endangered Species Act and this, uh, this butterfly, the regal, literary uh, again another opportunity for us to, uh, and the petroleum council to bridge the gap between the BLM and the Fish Wildlife Service and the operator to make, to come to some sort of common ground because in this case you're going to see an actual year long um, delay in the in, in the potential implementation of of this um, protection of the species habitat or the species itself and so. One of the things that the petroleum, uh, the regulatory group of the petroleum council is, is doing is working very closely with the, the Fish Wildlife Service um, to kind of have them give us kind of a feel for where they think things are gonna roll. Um, what you basically are trying to do is bridge a, an entire field season so you can prepare um, to permit and stay ahead of your rig line so that if you, you know, say it does get listed in, in the habitat, um, is identify the way we it potentially could be. You may have to you may have to go back and redo parts of your permit. So it's super important to get ahead of that. Be proactive, so you're not being reactive, especially in North Dakota where your your field season is really th you know a couple months, three four months long. And so again, communication in this in this uh, time is going to be super important. Um, working collaboratively with all agencies is probably as paramount today in it as it's ever been. Uh, I th kind of some of the, the points that, that uh, Eric has made where the, the current administration is kind of using these agencies as their tools. Um, you know, there's potential with Chevron Doctrine going away that maybe th that won't be quite so much as, as we look forward and maybe the courts will, will bring some sort of stability to, to the way that we do business. So um, I got two minutes left, so we cruised through that pretty fast. And I can't really see the audience, so I don't know if there's any questions. But I will offer a question if there are any, and if not, I'll give you 2.7 seconds back. All right, well, that's all I have. Thank you very much.